this week at Starbase. As demolition continues at the build site to make way for the new Gigabay, teams were hard at work putting the finishing touches on the Pad B launch mount, and Ship 35 performs a couple of static fire tests at the Massey outpost. Now let's dig into this week's update. Early on Friday morning, crews installed a new fire suppression system on the side of the launch tower at Pad A. From what we can tell, this will be the first time it was tested. Deliveries on hold-down arms for Pad B continued this week. The arms were brought into Sanchez and installed inside the launch table. Work continued on the tank farm expansion, with crews connecting another liquid oxygen pump and the strainer, which filters out any foreign objects from the propellant. Additional steel flame trench wall sections, deluge pipe segments, and a tank farm valve skid were brought in to be installed for Pad B. The following morning, Starship 38's nose cone was brought outside Star Factory, showing the reinforced lifting points and partially tiled and insulated heat shield before it was brought back inside. Later in the morning, we saw workers cut through the structural members in the triangular segment of Star Factory. Work continues to demolish this part of the building, clearing the way for the future Gigabay. And a couple of hours later, Ship 36 was rolled out of Mega Bay 2 ahead of its trip down to the Massey outpost. Over at Pad A, the ship quick disconnect arm was swung out and the chopsticks were raised to the top of the tower for another round of testing. Back at the build site, Starship 36 began rolling out to the Massey outpost in the afternoon. Once the ship was out of the ring yard, it began heading up to Massey's on Highway 4. Back at the launch site, testing was wrapped up and the chopsticks were lowered back down. Several clamp arms were lifted onto the Pad B launch mount overnight into Sunday morning. 20 of these armatures will hold down super heavy during testing and ahead of launch. Cryo testing began on Ship 36 on Sunday morning with the tank farm spooling up and conditioning for loading. The two propellant tanks began to fill up, starting with the methane tank, then the LOX tank. After a few hours of testing at flight pressure, the ship was detanked. The SpaceX and Buckner cranes switched places at Pad B the Buckner crane stopped further away to be reconfigured for the next phase of launch pad construction. Monday morning, Ship 38's nose cone was brought out of Star Factory and sent over to Mega Bay 2. Rows of glass were pushed and broken out of the Star Factory building's wedge area, segmenting the building's exterior so it can be pulled down one section at a time. In the evening, the guard shack at the D2 gate was moved off to the left, continuing the ever-constant changes at the launch site. Starship 36 was brought back to the build site. With the cryo-proof passed, workers will install the aft flaps and the engines for static fire testing. Ship 35 left Mega Bay 2 and began its journey to the Massey outpost for static fire testing, heading up Highway 4 in the lower volumes of nighttime traffic. Three more sections of staircase were brought out of the high bay. These segments were toppled and flattened by an excavator. A little over an hour later, Ship 36 was moved into Mega Bay 2. Another hold-down arm for the second launch mount was delivered in the morning, giving a clear view of how arms look before they're installed. As the stair sections continued to be lifted out of high bay and broken down, parts of the LTM crane began to leave Starbase. Outside the D2 gate at the launch site, an excavator cleaned up the debris from the demolished container storage shed. An unknown piece of hardware was brought to the launch site, but it was soon sent back to the build site. Work at the tank farm expansion continued Wednesday, with crews building out the fuel handling side of the fuel farm with a new pump skid. Late in the evening, Ship 35 was loaded with a small amount of propellant and performed a short 7-second single-engine static fire, simulating the conditions of a deorbit burn. On Thursday morning, a valve sled for the methane side of the pump station was installed. Back at the build site, Ship 38's forward dome section was brought out of Star Factory and taken to Mega Bay 2 for stacking. Later in the afternoon, construction fencing was moved up to the edge of Highway 4, extending the keep-out zone as far as possible. The Massey Outpost tank farm began spooling up for a second round of static fire testing. Prop load began on Ship 35, but fueling was aborted a few minutes later and the ship was detanked. The ship quick disconnect arm was swung out from the Pad A launch tower, and a directional spray nozzle was tested a few minutes later. The spray nozzle should help knock down any fire after the booster is caught. Cryo load began for a second static fire test attempt on Ship 35, filling the LOX tank to the brim to weigh the ship down. 
Chip 35 six Raptor engines ignited for a 60 second test fire. 25 seconds into the burn, one of the engines sputtered and with a bright flash, the static fire was aborted. Burning flames lingered under the vehicle after shutdown. The cause of the abort is currently unknown, but may be related to the engine failures on flight seven and eight. Back at the build site, the first section of the Star Factory wall was pulled down. Once the triangular annex is removed, workers will be one step closer to beginning the build of Gigabay. This week at the Cape, demolition of the old port gantry cranes continued. Workers finished cutting down the lifting arm, leaving just the superstructure. A United Launch Alliance Atlas V in the 5SRB configuration lifted off on Monday, carrying 27 of Amazon's Project Kuiper satellites into orbit. At 15.4 metric tons, this is the heaviest payload ever launched by the Atlas rocket. There were launch and recovery operations for four Starlink missions this week, with Doug bringing back fairing halves 185 and 218 from the Starlink Group 6-74 mission. Signet Warhorse 3 also brought back a short fall of Gravitas and Booster 1069 from that launch. The Falcon 9 was soon offloaded onto the dockside stands, and it finished its stay three days later, heading back to the Roberts Road facility. Signet Lightning towed out just read the instructions in support of the Starlink Group 12-3 launch. The mission lifted off on Tuesday night, carrying 23 Starlink V2 mini satellites into orbit on Booster 1077's 20th mission. Bob then returned two fairing halves, serial numbers 198 and 203, to port two days later. After swapping with Signet Lightning, Bob towed just read the instructions in Booster 1077-20 into port. Booster 1077 finished its stay at the docks on Thursday and was sent back to Roberts Road. A short fall of Gravitas only spent five hours in port before it was towed out by Signet Warhorse 3 to support the Starlink Group 12-10 mission. Doug also set out a few hours later. And the following day, the Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad. Once the stack was raised vertical, the count was on, and five hours later, the Starlink mission lifted off from the historic Launch Complex 39A, carrying 23 satellites into orbit on the first flight of Booster 1094. Both support ships returned to port two days later, with Doug bringing back the fairing shells 155 and 220, and Signet Warhorse 3 towing home a short fall of Gravitas and the Falcon 9 booster. Falcon 9 Booster 1094 began its first stay at the dockside stand on Thursday after being offloaded from the landing barge. Signet Warhorse 3 was back in action for the Starlink Group 6-75 launch, towing just read the instructions out to sea. The Starlink mission lifted off on Thursday from Slick 40, carrying 28 Starlink satellites to orbit on Booster 1080's 18th flight. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.